And for more on this, let's bring in Tom Bevan, Real Clear Politics co-founder and editor. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Great to be with I'd you. I'd like to begin, glad to be with you too. And I'd like to, uh, let's talk about Ohio a little bit because they've got a few things going on. First, um, let's talk about Cleveland where they have decided, the city council um, is looking at a petition right now to replace a statue of Christopher Columbus which, with a statue of Chef Boyardee. And many people may not realize that actually was a real person, an Italian immigrant. And I can put up on the screen what they're saying about this and the reasons behind this on the petition. It says, Chef Boyardee has been a go-to inexpensive meal for poor families for generations. During the current pandemic of 2020, Stores routinely sold out of many Chef Boyardee products due to the high demand. He truly created a fast, easy meal anyone can enjoy. Chef Boyardee is a much better role model then. Let's go now to Columbus, Ohio, where 25,000 signatures have hit a petition there to change the name of the city after an idea by chef, famous chef and TV host Guy Fieri to Flavortown. Let me read a little bit from that petition here. Quote, for one, it honors Central Ohio's proud heritage as a culinary crossroads and one of the nation's largest test markets for the food industry. Secondly, celebrity, Chef Liberty, excuse me, Guy Fieri was born in Columbus, so naming the city in honor of him, he's such a good dude, really, would be superior to its current nomenclature. My question for you is, this is something that began with the death of George Floyd on the streets of Minneapolis. And here we are talking about Flavortown. How much of this is about social justice anymore? Well, exactly right. I mean, it just sort of shows the lengths to which we've gone and how fast it's gone from a very, <clears throat> very specific thing where we talked about police, uh, excessive use of force by police, police brutality, um, needing police reform uh, to, to now, you know, obviously ripping down statues and talking about renaming towns. I'm not sure that this is this is helping uh, achieve any of the goals of the left. In fact, it's probably creating more of a backlash in a place like Ohio and some of these Midwestern states where, um, you know, Ohio is a place that's a, a relatively conservative state now. President Trump won it by eight points. And, and this sort of plays into uh, the sort of overreach, I think, and it's going to be part of the 2020 campaign. Yeah, the message can get lost in there because this started out with something completely different. And I can't imagine that people are actually protesting out there to name um, a city after a Guy Fieri idea. Right. And and as much as Columbus may like Guy Fieri, uh, the idea that, that, that they're going to name rename the capital city. I mean, it was already enough, I think, that, that they took down the monument to Christopher Columbus the other day, uh, you know, standing in front of the city hall in the capital city. Um, and again, I I'm not sure where this ends up. And it is now part of the 2020 campaign. We just talked about President Trump and how he's going out to Mount Rushmore. There will be protests there. Um, this, is, this is one of the big now overriding issues, and it's moved well beyond police reform. It's now a, a question of you know, whether you think America is, a, is an exceptional place, a great place to live, or whether you think it's a, a racist, oppressive society that needs to be completely torn down and rebuilt from scratch. And so that's sort of the landscape that uh, the political landscape, as it sits and right now, just a four months before the election. And I, let's talk about, let's move a little bit to the campaign here, because as you know, the polls are showing that the president is really struggling with suburban white voters, especially in some of these swing states. And you have Republicans now who are sounding the alarm. I want to put up a headline here by Mark Thiessen, who is a Trump supporter. This was a Washington Post op-ed. Trump's rhetoric is driving away suburban swing voters. He needs them to win. He goes on to write, many Americans who don't approve of Trump know it is in their self interest to reelect him, but Trump has to give those voters permission to vote in their own self-interest. Right now, he is not doing so. Meanwhile, Biden is giving those voters permission to defect. He is positioning himself as an inoffensive moderate who has pushed back against the party's socialist bent, saying we need to reform, not dismantle the police and embracing incremental change on health care by rejecting Medicare for all in favor of a public option. What are your thoughts on that, that we're hearing from people like Mark Thiessen, who's always been a great defender of the president? Well, I do think Republicans are worried. They're looking at the poll numbers, even the president's campaign, uh, you know, especially in these swing states where, where this election is going to be decided. He's trailing anywhere from about three to the seven points, uh, again, four months before the election. And, and they're wanting him to, I think, change his rhetoric a little bit, to soften it a little bit, to 
do exactly what Mark said, which is, you know, still stand for law and order, still stand for public safety, uh, but without using some of the, let the rhetoric that turns folks off. At the end of the day, the Trump campaign wants to make this not just a referendum on President Trump, but a choice and, uh, between Trump and Biden and to hang all the radical elements of the Democratic Party that we've seen play out here across the country over the last couple of weeks. And even if Biden tries to present himself as a moderate to say, look, if you're going to vote for Joe Biden, you're voting for all of that as well. Um, and and that's the choice that that the Trump campaign wants to you know present to voters right. in November. Right. And, and we do have to remind everyone we're still four months out. Uh, Tom Bevan, thank you so much. We appreciate your time today. As we do know, four months is an eternity in politics. Thank you. Thanks, Alicia.